Hello, uh, welcome to part two of my using Fisherman Triple Play with Ableton. Um, I've just opened a new uh, Ableton Live set here. Now, one of the things I said in part one is that you can't patch change instruments if you want to, say, use Ableton Live live, but you want to use the Triple Play within live, um, and you want to be able to patch change between different Ableton instruments. Obviously this isn't a problem if you want to use VSTs but the built-in Ableton instruments aren't VSTs so you can't host them within the Fishman Triple Play app. So one of the ways in Ableton that's easiest to do patch change commands is using instrument racks. So what I'll do is open an instrument rack. I'll just drag an empty one down to, whoops, what am I doing? Pop that in the uh, MIDI track here. Um, so we've now got an instrument rack. Uh, if we open the different devices here, we can now load in a number of different Ableton instruments. So let's have a have an organ. Uh, let's have a let's have a, a drum rack. Yeah, why not? No particular fancy player drums on the guitar, but there we go. Um, Let's have an operator, sort of pads, why not? Um, so, we've now got a few instruments here. Now, one of the things that you can do within Ableton is chains. Now, here, this is the chain selector, and at the moment it's on naught. So, if I play this here, at the moment, it will play, because it's, this is selected, it will play all of these instruments at once. Um, so... As I pointed out before, don't forget you need to have your Fishman Triple Play turned on here um, in preferences. If I so, if I play something, I now get this horrible noise where it plays all of the instruments at once, which we we don't want. That we want to be able to select between them. So what I'm going to do is just move these here. You can have it so that these chains. This is with the chain selector. If I move these out, you can put it so that these are all on at separate times, depending where this is. So if I'm on there, on whoops, missed that chain. Now I get that organ. If I'm on this chain, and now I get this kit I had. Um, then if I'm on this chain, that's a pretty horrible kit. Now I've got this synth here. Actually, let's because that kit's so horrible. Let's replace it with a different instrument. So if I choose that chain, so I've got these. Um, so the main thing now we want to do is really we want to be able to control this with the D-pad controller. Well, this supposedly isn't supposed to work according to uh, Fishman uh, technical support. But what I found, if I open my MIDI monitor here. Um, Let's just drag that a bit bigger. Let's turn off the filter. Uh, and let's turn off this active sense. Uh, clear that. One thing I'll do is at the moment I've got both TP guitar and TP control turned on. Well, I've just got TP guitar enabled in Ableton, so I'll turn off TP control to save any confusion with the MIDI messages. Now, if I press the D pad up and down controller, unfortunately, it's a bit more complicated to use the left and right. Um, and the synth switch. This doesn't cover being able to do anything with that. But if I press up and down, as you can see, um, if I go up and down, down takes me down in program. This is all on channel one. But the data, you can see if I keep pressing it up, every time I press it, it goes up one. If I press and hold it, it increments up and down like that. So it appears that I can do program change messages up and down perfectly fine. Um, Oh, don't forget as well, I've got this set as a remote um, in Ableton. Let's just get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. We've proved it. It's sending patch messages. But as I noted here, whoops, if I open preferences of Ableton, I've got this on remote. So that means that the volume control and this, these program up and down patches should be able to control anything within Ableton Live. If we choose this chain selector, we want to map this then to the program up and down commands. Unfortunately, 
um, and this is why you need Sweet. If I put this in MIDI learn mode with uh, Command M and I choose the selector and then I learn this, it recognises the input command but when I go back out of it, you can see pressing up and down, I'm pressing up and down at the moment since you can't see it, uh, nothing happens. So yeah, basically it's, whoops, just clicked. Uh, it's, it's no good for trying to program it like that. And the reason for that is that this chain selector um, and various uh, Ableton things, you can't assign program up and down changes to them. Generally, that you can do program changes with uh, clips, where if you load a new clip, it will force a program change. Um, but we can't, we can't just use that for the chain selector. But there's, if you use Max for Live, you can make all sorts of things do all sorts of things that they don't do normally. Um, I'd actually started looking at writing a Max for Live device, but I'm no Max for Live expert, and it gets a bit heavy. Um, and then I found that someone's already done one that does exactly what I want. So if you go to um, Robert Henker, the, who actually used to work for Ableton, um, who's a, a, a soundscaping extraordinaire um, technical musical genius person, if you go to his website at roberthenker.com and go to engineering, you'll find Max for Live devices. Um, and these here are ones that you could download free to use within your Max for Live, uh, within, with Max for Live within Ableton. So if you download that, um, you can then, I've previously downloaded it, and popped it in over here. Um, if you've got an instrument rack loaded, you can drag and drop this device, and pop it in front. Um, now, apparently if you read the little about section, it tells you a bit more about it. Um, but what this effectively will do is you need to drop this, you need to start the instrument rack first. It doesn't need the instruments loaded, but you've got to have an instrument rack in the, in the channel first. But then you drop this in afterwards, and it will auto-assign program can cha change messages to this chain selector. So if I now use the up and down keys, you'll see it suddenly jumped to up here. That's because I was previously uh, using it. You could see in the MIDI monitor I'd got up to whatever that is about... Um, 20 or something um, but if I now use up and down you can see I'm selecting chains with the d-pad on the guitar um, so hurrah if I go down to this one um, if you want to note, you'll note I didn't put any in naught because this chain selector won't select naught it goes down to there um, so I've Got this in there, that in there, that's in here. So now I'm playing this organ. I press the up arrow towards the sky. Now I'm playing that one. Press up again. Jobs are good. I'm now using Ableton Live with a little Max for Live plugin and I can patch change any of the devices that I want. As I mentioned earlier, because I've got remote turned on here, which has to be turned on, I believe, to run this, um, because that's turned on without any Max for Live devices regardless, I can go into MIDI map mode, I can select that, I can twizzle my volume pot, I'll set my max to 6, and exit MIDI map mode, and now I have volume on the synth, and I can change sounds. Jobs are good. So that basically covers how to use your Fishman Triple Play with purely Ableton instruments. Uh, obviously in this instrument rack I can also load VSTs as well. Um, one thing you could do as well with chains is if I, if I move these out to uh, something, I can have overlapping parts. Um, you could do uh, splits, so I should, I haven't actually tried this yet, let's see if it works. If I choose different keys, oh, I'm probably in a bit of a, if 
funny range. You can't select different strings, unfortunately, with these splits, um, unlike you can in the in the other um, in within the Fishman Triple Play thing. So you still don't quite get the same functionality. Um, if you want to just purely play live, you're probably best off using the Triple Play standalone app. Um, it, uh, or you can host it within this but as I say if you want to play built-in uh, Ableton instruments then this is pretty much uh, as good as it gets but you can choose different octaves for example so so I can't I don't know what chain I'm on at the moment if I go up use me now this plays both of them if I play low I get that one if I play high I get that so that's within the the key splits um, you can't select between synth both and real uh, live guitar um, that's another limitation the, the switch won't work for that um, and there's no functionality on the triple play forwards and back but obviously if you're using live you can get uh, various midi pedals you can map all sorts of things you can have different you can have your guitar in a different uh, different uh, track on here um, and use a lot of the other built-in automation and uh, assignments to be able to switch between synths and guitars, um, mute tracks and all of that kind of stuff. Um, that's other than just general able to know how. So you're slightly limited in, in functionality in that mode but you can see this gives you a hell of a lot more scope to do a lot more with the Fishman Triple Play purely with the built-in instruments in in Ableton Live um, but as I say if you want a patch change then unfortunately you will need Max for Live but you don't need to program anything yourself just pop to Robert Henke's website and get his uh, PGM underscore chain uh, device here and you're good to go I hope that's helpful and given you a, a few ideas on the extra things that you can do with Fishman Triple Play and Ableton Live cheers thanks for listening